Yes, Lord, we just agree right now, victory is yours, oh God. We just proclaim it, Lord, for each and every one of us right now. Father, I just speak victory, Lord. I speak the power of the holy name of Jesus right here in this place. Lord, who but you can do what, Lord, needs to be done? Who but you can take, Lord, the things that have happened, oh God, and you can turn it around. What seems to be evil, you can turn around for good. Who but you, Lord, can heal a broken heart? Who but you, Lord, can put a, a man that's out of his mind back into his mind? Lord, I thank you right now for the power that's in the name of Jesus to do these things because it needs to be done, Lord. There's some things, Father, that this world can't fix. There's some things that doctors can't do. There's some things that drugs can't put him back in order. And in the name of Jesus, Jesus, we just call for the power that's in the name of Jesus to overcome, Lord, everything that sets itself up against the knowledge of Jesus Christ. We call for every crooked place straight, every rough place smooth, every prideful, exalted place brought low, every depressed place, Lord, raised up in the name of Jesus. Because this is what you do, Lord. This is the power of the name of Jesus, Lord, to transform, to renew, to repair, and bring about, Lord, that which only you can do, Jesus. Lord, today we just come into agreement right now. Not my will, but your will be done. No, not some script that some Hollywood writer made, but your will be done today, Lord. Uh, happy ever after is when we see you face to face, Lord God. And Lord, beyond that, Father, forevermore. Lord, we bless, we bless, we bless, we bless. We bless those who curse us. We pray for our enemies today. Lord, they can't have us, they can't hold us. Lord, because we belong to a greater power, a greater authority has laid a hold of us. And today, God, we just shake off, Lord, everything, Lord, every chain, every restriction, every lid that's been trying to put on us, God. Lord, I thank you to the devil and all his tricks, Lord, again, trying to, again, distract us from his promises, oh God. But our eyes are on you, Jesus, today. Our eyes are on you, Jesus. Come on, I'm prophesying to somebody, get your eyes on Jesus today. Get your eyes on Jesus today. Woo, come on, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Today, Lord, we just come and we humble ourselves. Lord, it is not about us. It's never been about us. It's been about you and who you are in me. Jesus, thank you that, Lord, it's Christ within me. I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. But Christ, who lives in me today. And I thank you for the resurrection power in the name of Jesus. To, Lord, break off the chains. We're over the stone, O oh God, and rise above, Lord Jesus. Lord, I thank you that today, who but you can do this, God. Today, Lord, we thank you for each one that's here today. God, you brought them here. Some of them are on assignment. Some of them here have been, Lord, on assignment for some time. Lord, I bless them, Father. Let your will be done, Lord. Let your kingdom overtake them in every situation in their life right now. God, thank you, Lord, that you have a provision for them. Lord, I thank you that you have, I'm, I'm prophesying to somebody that God has a provision for you. You don't know how, but he's going to do it because that's what he does. In the name of Jesus, we just pray for that one going there wondering how this is going to all work out. Jesus is in control. And when he's Lord, seek first his kingdom like you have today to come into his house. And the word says the things which you need will be added to you. So, Lord, I bless, I bless, I bless, Lord, each and every one of us, Lord, to that end. And we thank you in advance of how you're going to bring it about. And thank you, Lord. Come on, take the hand of somebody next to you. Can you do that for just a moment? Just We're going to pray some prayer of agreement somewhere, somehow, in the name of Jesus. Come on, sister. Amen. Let's pray together. Come on, let's be a house of prayer this morning. In the name of Jesus, come, Lord. Have your way in this place. Let your will be done, Lord. I pray we stand in agreement right now. Lord, who but you, Lord? Who but you, God, can do what needs to be done? So, Lord, I pray for the healing anointing that's in the name of Jesus that says, by your stripes, I am healed. I am healed. I am healed. I am healed. Come on now. The word said, lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. And there's some sick people in this room right here, Lord. They shall be healed, delivered, restored, renewed, repaired in the name of Jesus. Because by his stripes, they are.
Lord heal has been done. And we say amen to that. Amen to that. Amen to that today, Jesus. So, Lord, I thank you for answers of prayer. I pray for those that aren't in this room that need a healing touch. Lord, I pray for that one who's sick, that we are beloved to, oh God, and they're beloved to us. And we pray right now, God, have mercy on them. Lord, stretch forth your hand. Did you not tell the centurion that, Lord, just speak the word, Lord? And he had great faith that, Lord, just speak the word today, Jesus. Speak the word of healing for our loved one. Lord, miles and distance has no limitation. God, walk into their room. Lord, walk through their walls. Lord, walk through their even identity, whatever's going on in their life, Jesus. And speak life to them and touch them and raise them up for your glory, sake. We pray. Amen, 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 amen. Come on, Woo, Jesus. God feel God in the room. Yeah. God is in the house today. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You can be seated if you can. Come on, Jesus. My God, help us. I'm going to ask Elder Word to come. You're going to uh, lead us in some announcements. Uh, I, I want to share a testimony, though. God's working. Elder, can we share a testimony about your daughter? Can we do that? Yeah, can you do it? Here, I'll help you. You come over here with me. So, a couple of weeks ago, we were praying over in the first floor. Because that's what we do in the first one. We like to pray over there, right? So, and uh, we were praying for a daughter, and she was talking about something that was going on with your daughter. So, tell us about that. Well, my daughter has a debilitating disease called HS. And um, I don't know if you've ever heard of it. You can look it up if you like. I'm not going to describe it because it's pretty nasty. But my pastor and I prayed about it every day since then. Things have gotten better and better. It's incurable. But she's moving, she's up and around and moving now, which she hasn't been doing for a long time. She's down to three band-aids. She, this is, she even came out of the bedroom yesterday and said, Mom, I'm down to three band-aids. Amen. And it's very exciting for her, and it's, it's very exciting for me. And I thank the Lord that he worked through me and through Pastor, and that my daughter is doing so much better. Amen. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's, a, it's an amazing testimony, and I, I just thank the Lord that, you know, sometimes um, we, we know that God answers prayer, but there's times where we really know that he answers prayer, and that's a miracle, because she's been struggling this for years, right? I mean, struggling, and it's been bad. And, uh, yeah, it was like 15 bad years a day sometimes yeah. for her. Throughout her skin, she had 15 bandages that she had to have on. So when she was saying free, I mean, that, to God be the glory, great things like that. So, Elder Ward, why don't you come and share some announcements here? Another stuff. Father God, I just thank you for that, Lord. I thank you for the healing. I thank you for the woman of God. I thank you, Lord. It's nothing like when your hand moves, your divine presence is felt. Healed in the house of the Lord. Healed. Thank you, God. So let's take care of Father with his kingdom. Mm -hmm. Stand in prayer as we prepare to give back to the kingdom of God that he has truly been good to us. Yes. All of us here have been healed and set free yes. from our sin nature. All of us here have been let go of the things that bind us up and keep us from seeing God as his son as our only true Savior. Thank you, Lord. Amen. That we are no longer a slave to sin. Yes. Thank you, Lord, that we walk in the righteousness of Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let's get ready to pray. I'm already on 10. It don't take too much more. <laughs> Brothers, would you come forward and take the offering? And can we start our prayer? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Yes. And for those of you 
I need to let you know that you can give on our flock note for those that receive emails from me every Sunday or Monday morning. And you can also put it in a mail or come by the church office. I'm here Monday through Friday, 9 to 1. And I thank you for having a heart to want to give. I'm just um, excited about our story. There's no greater love when you see one of your own get healed. When you see the hand of God move in your family. That's to tell me to calm down. Tell me to sit down. <laughs> you, can, you can go up. <laughs> I'm just, um, you know, I wasn't going to tell this story. I have a 19 year old granddaughter. She was at death door. My son calls me. Mom, mom. He's telling me the details, and he can't get to the hospital. And his wife had to take the only car to take the baby to the hospital, and they got her to the hospital. They had to life flight her to Peyton Manning's Hospital in Indiana. Peyton Manning like, is a football star. Yeah, right. right. And my son is calling me screaming, Mom, I can't get to the hospital, Mom. And I said, wait a minute, I got this. I'm in Cleveland. He's in Indiana. <laughs> I called his pastor from a church he stopped going to, and the man of God said, I'm on my way. You know what he told me? I got to tell him that this could go either way. I said, and when I get there, I'm going to tell him, my God is a healer. Yes. I'm going to tell him what the Bible says he does for those that are the household of faith. That's what I'm going to tell my son. So about eight hours later, I get here and I got my anointed oil. My ex-husband, he's sitting there, he's begging God. I'm saying, God, you said. He's pleading. I'm saying, but God, you said. I thank Irma G. I thank Irma J. Because it was because of her healing room. By the time spending there, I learned how to pray a healing prayer. My granddaughter, three months later, walked out of that hospital. Last night, I talked to her. She's 19. If she's going to college, she'll be a psychiatrist. She got all her wit. She was in a coma for three months. She's got her wit about her. Can God do it? Let him do it. Yes. Okay. Get back to this church. <laughs> Woo! Jesse, Jesse. She's just the sweetest little thing. 19 years old. Thank you, Lord. Serving the Lord. Thank you, Jesse. Don't Amen. ever forget what God has promised us. Amen. So, 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 Monday we have a dog Bible study at 5.30. Brother Charlie is going to be teaching on the book of Revelation. I pray that you would come and learn, get understanding on how the last days are. On Tuesday, we have um, Connection Meal. We have a meal that heals, and it's at 5 to 6. But before that, we have distribution from 4 to 5. So I want you to know, Pastor Murray, it's a fundraiser. Garden's Pies for $20. You buy one for 20 and buy one for your friend. And the purposes of this is so we can pay for our Thanksgiving meal that we give out freely to the shut-ins and those that don't have it. So I ask if there's any way you can to participate in that fundraiser. Now, there's information in the hallway, you know my number, call me, and I'll help you, you know, I'll take your funds and we'll sit down and get your order together. Okay, okay. So, let's go forward. This week on the 13th on Wednesday, we are having the, um, East Lake Senior Center is having a food giveaway. It starts at, the, at 11, but some people come at 10.30. I pray that you come and partake of that. And if you're able to come and put your hand to the plow and help as a volunteer in the spreading of that food, it would be great. Thank you. Thank you. So, going forward, um, Thrifty's Rummage and Book Sale is going to be on Saturday, September the 16th. We have been blessed to sell out all those table spots. There's no more rental table. Okay, you don't have no more spaces, but we want you to come and partake and, you know, and donate. You know, the book sale, come and see the books that we have for sale and take advantage of it. And then, you know, the rest of the month we have on Monday, we have on Friday, September the 22nd, we have Volunteers Day. We ask them that you would come and help add produce for the Saturday's distribution. And the Saturday's distribution starts at 8 to 11. They also give away free pet food. 
I'm asking you to come alongside and help us out there while we're doing what God has called us to do, and that's feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and set the captives free. And I wanted to remind you also about the raffle. We have a photo, a picture, the bottom of the St. Olive, and uh, we're, we're selling raffle tickets. <coughs> One. I have them downstairs yesterday. Okay, so he has it out in the corridor, so please stop by and buy raffle tickets to help bless the brother and bless the raffle sale. So, Lord, I thank you for what you've done. I thank you for the many times that you've healed, not only in my individual family, but here in the sanctuary. I sit here and I look at Pastor Meredith walking into healing. I look at Marilyn Palau. Yes. I look at all of us as we've gone through life and how he's healed us and may he set us free. So may we never forget what you have done for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 And he got you, sister. Yes, he does. If I could wasn't looking down when I'm looking at you, Amen. he's got you. Amen. He's no respecter of person. You're next. And I love to hear testimonies of God's healing power. And some of you are a part of those testimonies. God's done a work in your own life, in your own heart. Some of the biggest testimonies, again, are, are not just physical ones, but they're mental ones. How God has changed our mind. Yes. Um, you know, I, I would say I was stuck on stupid for a long time. So Jesus changed my mind. Yes. And, uh, you know, I didn't get here by myself. I didn't get here because I'm better than anyone else. I got here because... I encountered somebody that loved me more than anyone ever could. And so just sometimes you gotta come back to that place and go, hey, God, I'm here because of the grace of God. I'm here because the Lord knew me. And uh, he somehow spoke to me in a way that I could understand him. And I still, all my life, I, I've been serving since I was a young man. I got called into ministry when I was 17. Um, I don't take, I, I don't even understand that path. I can't, it's hard to comprehend how God would just lay hold of me. He's what he saved me from that I am most glad about, you know, that I didn't go through some of the trials and tribulations of some of my brothers and sisters in Christ. But today, we all have to take this this aspect. The Lord did it, and only he could have done it. He, he moved us, so it's still good. It's still good. I believe in the healing and went to you, and I know God has a plan for healing purposes in our region. And uh, so continue to pray. Uh, we're making some changes with the healing house. We're trying to just get it back into alignment so that we can pray with more people. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, part of the plan, again, is uh, our, our, our distribution. And, and I, I saw her have that whole thing about the senior center. We promote the senior center because we sponsor that event. Okay, so we go to the senior there in uh, East Lake. It started when we had maybe 25 to 30 about eight years ago. Last month, we did about 255 families there. Um, so talk about just being faithful, 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 and the Lord has just brought that about. But again, those are opportunities, and there's really three priorities that we have with that. The number one priority is, is, is Jesus first. It's Jesus is Lord. Second thing is we're there because of relationships, that we can't touch people unless we get to know them and have a conversation with them. The third thing is resources, and we put it in that priority because we believe that Jesus cares for those. That are there. But our goal is to give a cup of cold water in the name of Jesus. There's too many people who give cups of cold water because it's just the right thing to do, and it is the right thing to do, don't get me wrong. But it's in the name of Jesus that changes everything. Yes. And so I just want you to hear that. The thrift store, we give stuff away, which we do on a regular basis over there to people. We gave out some uh, dressers last week, and we're going to give out some more stuff this week. It's what we do. Okay, it's who we are, but it's Jesus that gives us that command to help those that we come across. It's Jesus that causes us to be in relationship with them because we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Jesus, right? So, but resources are important to people, but they're not the answer Jesus is. So we just want to let you know that's our theme and we're going to continue to beat that drum. Uh, we're getting ready for our Thanksgiving. Last year we did, I think, about 700, 600, 700 meals last year. Uh, what was it? 10 weeks. Yeah, it's dead weeks. Everybody wants to tell me that because I'm supposed to fear God and get me on my knees. So, uh, yeah, so we're working toward that. We're changing up things here based on that Jesus 
is Lord, uh, the relationships, and and uh, this aspect of, of again resources. So we do deliveries, and this year we're going to open it up inside to a limited amount of people. Uh, we haven't done that for a few years, but we'll be setting up right here in the sanctuary and have hosting a, a, a Thanksgiving feast, and then we will deliver. Uh, we're going to partner with Church House of uh, Living Stones um, in Euclid, the new church plant that we're partnering with. Uh, there, they're going to do Euclid for us. Euclid does not have a Thanksgiving meal as far as we're aware of. It's a city of almost 50,000 people, which is crazy. On Thanksgiving Day, uh, they don't have a lot of opportunities. Their senior center, uh, you know, they, they wanted to give our name to everyone in the city, and we said, we're only going to do so many meals, so only give it to seniors, you know, so, uh, but we've been doing a lot of meals through that, so just pray with us about that. We just want God's stuff to happen. Uh, it's good that we give them a meal, and we want to give them a feast, and so, uh, but it's going to be a great opportunity. If you'd like to be a part of that, we'd love to have you be a part of that, too, and, and so uh, we'll, we'll give you more information in the days ahead. Uh, we're in this why Elijah today. We're going to get into the, the word. So in a moment, uh, we ask you to turn uh, in the scriptures if you have them to Isaiah chapter 40. And Isaiah 40 lays out a, a role here about Elijah. And one thing I learned this week is Isaiah was the prophet, but his, he was a prophet during about 500 B.C. And uh, Elijah was about 850 B.C. So it wasn't that this prophecy was spoken directly about Elijah. It was describing who Elijah was and, and again, proclaiming a principle about the spirit of Elijah and how that, again, all of us have this area. Last week, we just talked about this place of God having plans beforehand. We talked about the foreknowledge of God, that God already knows, again, the things that you're going to come up to, and then you are given a choice whether you're going to fulfill them or not. God will always give you opportunity, but he won't make you fulfill the opportunity. He'll give you open doors, but he won't make you walk through those open doors. He'll give you an anointing if you will apply it to somebody in need, but he won't force it on you. That's not the way the Lord works. And so today we want to come back to that forerunner is that we need to have an awareness that there's things that God put in our path. And sometimes we're so busy about getting the job done that we forget that it was on the way, again, sometimes that Jesus healed people. On the way, a woman with an issue of blood said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. It was on the way to go to Jairus' house to raise up somebody from the dead. It was on the way. So don't forget that God has a plan within the plan, and you're headed this way, and you know that's where God wants you to be, and that may be so. But on the way. There can be an encounter on the way to the places that God's called you to do. You may go into a place and you think you're there to do something else, but God wants you to pray for them. God wants you to speak hope into them. You never know, again, who you're talking to or who needs that. You don't know who's thinking about ending their life. You don't know what hopelessness is in a house until you walk in there and you bring the presence of God with you. So it's in this place that we're talking about Elijah because Elijah had the spirit of the Lord upon him. And we're going to uh, just break down his life a little bit here. But in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3, uh, just our, our time of the, the forerunner is, A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. This is found again in, in Matthew, where again John the Baptist is there. John the Baptist is preaching. He said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The message that he had was a simple message. But the message, again, of the forerunner is get right with God. Yes. That's the message. Just get right with God. He's come again in that place. And we'll break down this scripture in a later message. But this whole chapter talks about the aspect of what God's plan is. Is His plan is to make crooked places straight, rough places smooth, depressed places raised up. Because we live in a world that's crooked. We live in a world, again, that is dealing with rough things that have happened to them, things that should not happen to them. And what happens when the wheels come off? Who has the answer? Well, we are here to say Jesus is the answer. He's the truth, the life, and the way, right? So in this place, we want to say there's a message of hope that we need to carry within us 24-7. And you may never know when you're going to have to pull that out of your heart and say, I know because I know. I know because I experienced. I know because I encountered God. I know what God has done for me. And no one can take that away from you. And it's what the devil is the most afraid about in your life is the testimony that you carry. 
I'm going to start preaching here in a minute. <laughs> You're going to get happy. Because the enemy is a liar. He's a thief. He's a dominator, an intimidator, a manipulator. He's a user, an abuser. And in that place, friends, you need to get the handle of God on your life and let God use you as an instrument. Because once we were used for blasphemy, for once we were used to kick people down. We were once used to swear and curse and see all the things about them that they can't do. But now we have a voice. And it is a voice that's crying out in a void. It is a voice in barrenness, friends, spiritually speaking. It's a voice that must bring about something that's greater than itself. It must be, again, something that is full of life, something that's full of hope. And it may only be planted as a seed, but a seed can change everything. Yes. A voice of one crying in his own barrenness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Isn't that just like God? I love what Isaiah 43 says. Some of you have read that. It says that he brings a stream in the desert. Like, how does that happen? You know, in a place where it should not be happening, it happens. That's you. That's exactly you, friend. Something's happened that should not have happened, but God got a hold of you somehow, some way, and got you again realigned with something higher, something better, something pure. So let's just go back to why Elijah. Who is this guy, Elijah? You know, we talk a lot about him. Like John the Baptist, we're probably more familiar with the New Testament that he had the spirit of Elijah. But who was this man? And, and why is he known as a forerunner? What was so important about his life that he, again, was speaking into the lives of those, even into our generation, and still, again, transcends it? Why was Isaiah talking about the role of Elijah 300 years after, again, uh, Elijah lived, here's Isaiah prophesying about him. Malachi, the very last verse of the Old Testament, how important is Elijah? It mentions that he would have a message that God was going to send, again, a voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord to turn the hearts of the father to the children and the children to the father. That's how important it is. The last verse of the Old Testament revelation came back to the spirit of the Lord was upon him to preach the good news. And again, God was going to send a forerunner into that. And you, friends, have been called again to that same task to go before, before it happens. We sing that song with Pioneer. It's such a powerful, again, message of hope because sometimes God has to send somebody in to prepare the way of the Lord. Amen. Why is that? Because the enemy is a treacherous devil, and he will do everything he can to put pits and, and, and again, traps and stumbling blocks and snares to keep people there. But when it says that God builds a highway, he, he brings a holy bulldozer through there. He creates again. There, see, the construction out on Vine Street is prophetic. Amen. Because God is going to do something in this region, and he's under construction. And I love, you know what they're doing is they're putting a new water line in. Ooh. Hallelujah! I get even more prophetic. <laughs> so fresh water to those who are thirsty in the desert. Amen. Come on. I'm going to get excited. You guys are bored. Come on, man. What's up? <laughs> well, let's talk about the spirit of Elijah. The spirit of Elijah, he was a messenger of God. So we're just going to read the opening verse there. Again, where it talks about this aspect who, who he was. James quotes him, and I love James. It's one of my favorite books in the Bible because it's so practical. I love that, you know. That how can you say you love God and, and hate your brother? How can you say that you love God and they're, they're in, in poverty and you don't do anything? How can you say you love them? You can't say that. You must act. Love acts. Love responds. Well, in chapter, again, 5, where it's talking about prayer and healing prayer, and call the elders of the church and anoint them with oil kind of prayer, but in James 5.17, it says this, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And then it says in verse 18, and he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. When we talk about this place again, about who Elijah is, the first thing we need to know is he was a man. He wasn't God. He wasn't Jesus, God incarnate. No, he was just a man. But what a man who knew how to touch the heart of God. It says when he prayed. I mean, there was something wrong in Israel. But right out the rip, when they begin to describe who Elijah was, 
it says that God gave him a word, and this was the word. It, was gonna, it wasn't going to rain for three and a half years, which that has consequences. I mean, number one, he, he got the word. So the three principles that we use in discipleship is, what is God saying? What are you going to do about it? And who's going to help you? The, the last one is something that I think we just added this last year, came across it, because a lot of times you can hear from God, and, and again, you can do something, but by yourself, you are limited. Amen. So you need to ask for help. So if God's got something stirring in your heart, ask for help. Ask for help. Two are better than one. In this place, again, that the, the, the apple, we want to call people in there. Because God is speaking today. Is anybody listening? God is hungry for his will to be done. Is anybody doing it? You know, I, I think that there are people out there who are doing the will of God. And there's too many other people who are, who are waiting for somebody else to do them instead of them doing the will of God themselves. You see, again, as we said, God will give you the opportunity, but he can't make you fulfill it. And so when we get down to it, is you can hear all you want. I, I mean, I, I believe in prophecy, prophecy. I believe in the prophetic. But I, again, when I know what God wants me to do, for me to sit down and, and try to listen to every prophetic word that's out there would be out of the will of God. I know what God wants me to do, and I'm after it. Mm -hmm. I put my head down. I'm going to get through some things to get there, but I'm after it. And so I want to do the will of God. But sometimes, again, I, I think I can do it on my own, and that's where I get in trouble. Mm -hmm. I need to ask for help. And so in this place, we want to talk about this place. Elijah was a man. So we'll, we'll start there. God uses people, does he not? Yes. First, Corinthians, First Kings 17.1 says this. Now Elijah, the Tishbite, from Tish in Gilead, and said to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel lives, whom I serve, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years, except. I like that. Except of my word. Yes. Talk about confidence. He says, when I say it's going to rain, it's going to rain. I mean, that's bold. I mean, that's gutsy to go up and tell somebody, hey, look, hey, king, you're not in charge. God is. And God says it's not going to rain for three and a half years. Okay? So deal with it. Okay? Which is a problem. And it's a problem because why they killed most of the prophets was because when they didn't like what God was saying, they killed the voice that was saying it. Not going to change the mind of God when they do that. In fact, I think God probably would resolve himself that much more. So you're going to kill my man, and now what? You expect me to answer your prayers? No, that's not the way, the way God works, right? So God sends a messenger there. So I just want to, again, say a couple things about that. Number one is God may give you a word, but if God gives you a word, your responsibility is to share that word. And here it was, a word came to Elijah. He had prayed and was so confident in his prayer life that he had heard from God that it caused him to go to the king. Number one, in Israel, he went there and told him himself, I, I have some really good news. It's not going to rain for three and a half years. And I know that really may sit well with you, king. No, he didn't say it like that. He said, as a matter of fact, this is what's going to happen. You need to be ready. I think he, there was a mercy that God would even warn him that that was going to take place. So the king didn't kill him again. Now, Ahab, one of the most classic bad guys in the Bible, right? And here's how he was bad, is that he knew about the things of God, but he had a wife named Jezebel who didn't have a mind to do the will of God. And so he was a weak man when it came to him standing up for the things of God. So that he even allowed Elijah into the room to have a voice with him says something about his ability to say, well, maybe God's going to say something. Maybe it's going to be something good, right? But we find out that there became a troubled relationship between them. In fact, that's what Ahab called, called Elijah. He said, oh, here comes the troubler of Israel. Oh, here he comes. He's going to come with another downer word. And he's going to just come in and tell us how bad we are. So that place, again, is a part of the calling and the purpose that God had upon Elijah is God gave him word. Number one, if we want to be a forerunner, we need to learn how to pray. Yes. And we need to learn how to hear from God, and we need to have the boldness to do what God tells us to do. Yes. Those are three areas that you can just pull out of his prayer life there. And it's interesting that it's mentioned several times, about, again, about Elijah in the New Testament. And that's one of them is in the book of James, which talks about a prayer life. 
and that we should have a prayer life. And that it says, and when he prayed, it did not rain. It didn't say when he said. It said when he prayed. And then when he prayed again, it, it, it rained. So this place, again, of not commanding God, but hearing the, the timing of God and calling them back. So the spirit of life also calls people back to God. That's one of the things that was going on there is his message had to be there again about coming back. So Isaiah 40, verse 3, that we already read, let's go to verse 4. It says, every valley shall be exalted, every mountain and hill brought low, the crooked place is straight and it shall be made straight and the rough place is smooth and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So why, why does God want to call the church back into alignment with the purposes of God? It says this voice crying out. Why does God give people a voice to call them back to God? It is part of the prophetic function. The fivefold ministry gives, again, a prophet, uh, the, the, um, the eight past, the apostle, prophet, uh, evangelist, uh, shepherd, and then teacher. All of those, again, are about what God has called. But the prophet, again, is something that calls people back into covenant with God. That's ultimately their, their job is. That which has been broken, severed, rough, crooked, whatever it is that God wants to say, the prophetic voice should be calling us back to, it's God first. That's the purpose of God. So when God raised up prophets in the Old Testament, that was their primary mission, is to get the people of God who have gotten off track back on track. Can you see why we need a, that prophetic unction today? Again, not everybody's a prophet, but the, again, forerunner <clears throat> anointing calls us to bring people back to God. That's the purpose. America is away from God. Amen. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. Do we need a voice crying in this wilderness? Yes. 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 And if, who's going to be that voice? Come on. There's been voices in the past, but we cannot rely on the one voice. We all have to use our voice. Amen. So this place again, so look, we just described it before. Crooked means sinful. It means out of alignment. What it says sometimes of equipping people to do what God's called them to do, it, it, it mentions this word equip is a word that says it sets spiritual bones. In other words, people are so broken that without the hand of God or, or others to help Put the bones back in place. They won't heal properly. If they don't heal properly, they won't function properly. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. So if they're not functioning properly, as God would have them to do that, sometimes they want to rush back in to do what God's called them to do, but they're broken. Mm -hmm. So they function only at a lower level because they're not healed. Amen. A doctor needs to come in and set some spiritual bones, but here's how that works. Sometimes it says that as ministers... That you're supposed to, again, put things back in order. And there's a lot of chaos in churches. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm a witness. I've been a pastor for 40 years. I just said that. Yes, I, 40 years. Mm -hmm. And one thing I learned is that they're, you know, the enemy loves to stir the pot. Yes. Like my mother yes. Yes. That this morning, yes. you know. Yes. And just some things that happen and, you know, God help us. But that, that place of setting spiritual bones is not pleasant. Mm -hmm. It hurts. And let's say, when you're already in pain, you don't want more pain. Mm -mm. So when the doctor says, hey, I love you, we're going to take a few days to, to get you all settled so that your swelling goes down, and then we're going to come back and we're going to break it real good. We're going to break it right this time. You broke it wrong. We're going to break it right. Okay, in that sense, that doesn't sound like a meeting that you're going to say, boy, I can't wait till that's all. <laughs> Glad that's going to happen. You know, that's the way it is in the kingdom of God. And unfortunately, some people won't do the hard work to get ready for the things of God. I have to say, my first years in ministry uh, were tough years. There's things that needed to be set back into to, to place in my life. My priorities about my relationships. I was really good on the outside, but when it got to my wife and I, we argued, and, and uh, I was pretty selfish, mostly because I was selfish. And I had to die to some as you know, I had to get that one step recovery program. All those that are married can know this is you know, there's only one step in, 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 in the church that you need if you're going to be a husband, which means you should love Christ, it's Christ loved the church, and He died mm -hmm. for the church. So the one step is just die. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's pretty simple, not complicated. If you don't die, you're going to suffer, and you're going to blame 
and you're going to say it's somebody else's fault or your wife's fault. But you've got to come to the fact that if Christ was willing to lay his life down, then how about you? Are you in that position where you said, I love God so much that I'm willing to die to myself, die to what I want, how I feel, what I think, all of those things? It's not an easy step, but it's a necessary step to be a vessel of honor. And when we come to this place where that bone is set and the healing happens, it changes us. Because then we can learn what love is really all about. That love is about sacrifice. Yes. And that's exactly why Jesus went to the cross. He, he went to the cross because he loved. Not just because of all the other things that that set in motion. But the number one thing is he did it because love sacrifices. And until if the greatest thing is love, then why are we not, again, more attuned to that? If the greatest thing is to love God and to love others, then we ought to be the greatest when it comes to love. But you cannot know love until you learn that it's not easy. It is not convenient. It is not something that you can put on a clock. It is something, again, that happens because you've made a commitment to say it's not about me anymore. And in that place, crooked places can be made straight. Rough places can be made smooth. And you can get all depressed and have your own pity party once in a while, again, for a minute. And then you've got to put it back in the hands of Jesus and get on with it. There are too many people that, you know, have that pity party and they just let it linger. You know, there's like, you know, some good piece of steak that they want to eat. You know, they're just lingering on that pain, on that wrong, on that injustice. No, you've got to give it to Jesus. And if you don't, you know, there's consequences. So let's go back why the whole purpose of Verse 5 describes to us the why. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed. You can't see God if you've got too many things in front of you, too many things that will distract you. The glory of the Lord will show up when the crooked places are straight and the rough places are smooth and all of your pride has been taken out of you and all the depression has been lifted out of you as well. All of those things does this one thing, that you can see the Lord more clearly than you did before. Until we see Jesus high and lifted up, there's some things that again, ooh, come on. When the glory of the Lord is not in your life, there's something about that. So this, this great axiom, again, of Ruth Ward Heflin years ago, she wrote a book called The Glory Book. And, and just great. I'll share, it's this thing. I'll share the, the real truth of it in just a few minutes here, uh, in a minute. Okay. Praise until you worship. Worship until the glory comes. Stand in the glory. Now, there's a lot of people that can praise. Less people that can truly worship. And a whole lot less people that want to linger when the glory of God comes in. There's too many people that go, okay, we're done. Mm -hmm. I've been in places and it just hurts my heart. I walk in, the presence of God is so sweet. Mm -hmm. But they're on the clock and they got to go, okay, we're all done with that. Stop it, you know, stop praising, stop worshiping. We've got something else to do right now. We got to do this. There's nothing more important than praise. Amen. Nothing more important than his glory. Mm -hmm. It says that all of sin falls short of the glory, but when you're forgiven, you get to stand in the glory. You get to stand in his presence. And God who knows you, exactly who you are. That's why he don't play games. If you don't, again, put stuff away into the hands of God, you're going to miss out on some things. And one of those things is his presence. And it's the greatest promise that's in the scripture where we walk through this valley in the shadow of death. And friends, I used to think that that was when somebody died until I realized it's all the time, 24-7. This world it stinks of death. Yes. And it's dying. And when you walk through that, your only promise that it has there is when, when you walk through that, that God would be with you. Amen. This Emmanuel, God with us. It's a great promise. Don't live in the shadow of death. Live in the life that God's called you to be, and that's in his presence. You can be in a stinky place. You can work in a stinky place. But when you have the presence of God, it like sanitizes it. Amen. Amen. A Holy Ghost sanitizer. <laughs> the stench of everything that would just repel you will attract you because God called you to it. It changes everything. And that's why his presence. You know, it says your name, we see the song, your name is this, it's a, a fragrance, what is that? That oint, ointment poured forth, like the woman with the alabaster jar. And it says the fragrance filled the room. See, when you're broken and you're full of the glory, even when they try to get under your skin, the oil of heaven begins to flow out. And it changes not only your atmosphere, it changes their entire atmosphere. And they thought they had you. 
So all of those things of preparation are all about bringing the glory. Oh, God, bring the glory. That's the spirit of Elijah. The spirit of Elijah is not, again, just facing down with the prophets of Baal. It is not just, again, about facing off with Jezebel. No, it is about, again, the glory of God, that the glory could come back into Israel so that all the, the uh, idols would be broken, that the enemy would be shamed because of their stand against the, the Lord God Almighty. And in that place, we must realize that it's there. So let's go back to what... In the, the next verse is in verse 6. Very important. It says, the voice said, cry out. So we, we said, and, and the, again, there will be a voice crying out in the womb. So he asked this great question, what shall I cry? Now this is really good. All flesh is grass. What does that mean? I, 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 I'm not even gonna, this time of year, I always think about my, my uh, high school playing football and what they said. You know, They said, uh, he said, you're going to be like grass, and I'm going to be like a brand new lawnmower. That's what he used to tell us. But he, he didn't say that as kindly as I just told him. <laughs> but this place, again, of, of this flesh is grass, what does it mean? It's transitory. It's only for a season. It won't last for long. See, their seasons were brutal. I, it was the strangest year that we had, right, in August, because it was raining in August and the grass was green. I'm so used to the grass being dead. In August, right? So this place again, if it's season, got a tur got turned upside down, so it's greener, and uh, it had a lot of different consequences to that being greener. But I'm just here to tell you, tell you that we are here only for a season. You have an expiration date on you; you just don't know where it is. Yes. Amen. Only, you are just having a limited run on this world. And so when he says there needs to be a perspective. About that, there are people who are building their own worlds. They have beautiful uh, mansions here on earth, but it won't be long until they're in the grave, and all their stuff has been given to fools who spend it. And again, all the things that they worked so hard, and we're so proud of, will come to nothing. I remind myself of this lady who had the grass. And she she was like immaculate about the grass in my neighborhood, in my neighbor, and she was an older lady. And I think she had the city um, uh, department on speed dial because any time that I went over her lawn, because of the driveway where I am, the department's actually my lawn, but since she mows it, she would freak out that I touched that place on her, you know? So, and my dad came from Minnesota, and you know, he wasn't used to riding down there, so he rolled right over her lawn. And the police came to my door. <laughs> And, uh, and so the police said, what kind of people are you? That old lady is so mad at you. She's, she's going to have a heart attack because she went on her lawn. I said, officer, it wasn't me that went on my lawn. It was my dad. I was kind of <laughs> my dad under the bus, right? <laughs> it wasn't me. But I said, okay, we'll, 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 we'll deal with that. We, we apologize. And I went and apologized to the woman. You know, but I'm just thinking to myself about this whole aspect of the boundaries and how that that works. You know, with people who, again, they will cry foul when it comes to you. But again, we need to own what we do. But that is just grass. So here's the more here's the rest of the story. The next people they got in, and in one summer, it went from being a beautiful log to being weeds all over it and overgrown and, and like just made nothing. And I was just thinking to myself, you know, when it comes down to it is, there are people who will spend so much time, and the very next people that possess that place will do just the opposite of what they did. And they're thinking they're something. They got something. You know, every law could go to seed in just a, a, in one season. And in this place, we'll talk about, again, what God wants to do. As we conclude our time together, I just want to come back to this place of, uh, of several things. I want to call you back to this place of prayer. You know, Elijah was a man. You're a man, you're a woman. When it comes to your prayer life, are you praying or complaining? You know, there's a lot more people playing than praying, let's face it. But when it gets down to it is, are you a person of prayer that will hear the voice of God and call that forth on those that need to know? Your family needs to know that you're, they're loved. And they need to know that God loves them. Too many people, even in our own family, we can get all judgment on, well, they're this and they're that. You just need to share the love of Jesus. 
And in that place, friends, we have authority that God has given us in the realm of those of influence. And so in this place, Elijah was a man, and he prayed. I'm asking you to pray. This, we're coming up again next week, uh, beginning next Saturday, on the Days of Awe, uh, which is Rosh Hashanah. It's a, a, Jew, a Jewish holiday. Ten days following that is the Ten Days of Awe. And we're asking again to set aside some time to see the face of God. The Days of Awe were meant to examine yourself, to see if there's something in you that really needs to be set right, that crooked place set right. So make a note, put it in your phone every day that week to say, I'm going to pray and I'm going to ask the Lord, Lord, what is, what have I done that I need to get right? Where have I got off track? Where am I complaining about somebody else when really I've got the board in my own eye and I'm looking for a twig in somebody else's? So just take some time to pray and fast. It's a national call of prayer. Every year they do that. But this year, believe that, again, God... Is contending with America. And I, you know, we can get into that, but I'm not going to see I just want to say, pray. That's what Elijah did. If we're going to be forerunners, we've got to hear from God and do what God tells us to do. Amen. There's too much going on in the body of Christ that duplicates what everybody else is doing. God's asking you to be organic, sovereign, one of He made you one of a kind. Why is it that we have to be like everybody else? Why is it that our church has to be like every other church? Why is it that your family has to be like every other family? You have to be who God made you to be and to be true to that. And so, just again, getting back to this place of Elijah was a man, yes, and God had a destiny and purpose for that man as he has for you as well. So come back to that and, and again, sincerely seek God, what is it that you want to do? So too many people come and ask the pastor, say, well, what are you doing so I can do that? We are a diversity of a body. We are not alike. You are not like me, and you should thank God for that every day. You're not <laughs> like me. Okay? But God made you the way you are. And for you to come into alignment is a sweetness to the eyes and the smell of God that when your praise comes up, it is from the heart. And you do something to the heart of God that is unique and special and precious. So don't let somebody else praise for you. I mean, as good as some of the worship teams are, and the YouTubes and all that other stuff is, it's your praise that he's at. It's your worship. It's your uniqueness that brings you to a place of endearment to the heart of God. And don't let somebody else fill that void for you. You know, you're waiting for somebody else to pray. Oh, that God would hear your voice. Amen. It says like a father hears his children. So we have a father who hears our voice, and he, he knows the difference between your complaining and your, your emergency, I need help right now. You know the difference in your children when it, it's there, you're there to pick them up before they land on the floor practically, but again, God is that way to you, and he knows your voice, and he knows the difference between your faking it, and, and again, your desperate, and all that we would pray desperate prayers, not God bless. Well, I, I just want to bring that back to you. Test and see if there's crooked places in you. Test and see if there's rough places that you're just angry, you know, about that. In, in the time it says that there was a three and a half year famine, you know, people got angry. That's why the king was so world wanting to end Elijah because he thought if I ended him, then it'll rain. No, that wasn't the way God planned. He said three. So if he ended his voice, his voice would have never prayed that it would come back to rain, right? So then it would have been a desert. Mm -hmm. The issue, again, gets back to uh, your voice and making those things, uh, again, crooked, straight, rough, smooth. Oh, there's some rough places in me. And, and it catches me when I realize I'm angry about something. When I get angry, it tells me that there's something rough going on in my life. What is that? Usually, for me, it was an insecurity, a vulnerability, something that, again, I didn't feel comfortable with, so I got angry. And, uh, and in that place, uh, it reveals something about my own heart. That's rough. It shouldn't be rough. You know, it should be given over to God and help me say, God, I know I'm not all that. You know, pride doesn't, it goes before a fall, but it doesn't go easy, right? It goes hard. So this place, again, of, of letting the glory of God come in. Take some time while you're praying and make room for his glory. Make room for his presence. Make room for his heart. 
for you. And it, there's something about that word that says that God brings protection. We were saying that God's a defender today. It's in worship that you find a better defense. Because he's not doing it because he has to, because sometimes he demanded. He does it because he sees you love it. And how much more will he want us to defend him if we love it? So let's, let's take our communion elements. If you have received them today, we're going to take communion. We practice this regularly. It was odd last week. We didn't practice it uh, here uh, because of the kind of service that we had. But today we're, we're going to, again, embrace this place of sacrifice, the sacrificial love of God. Why Elijah? He needed to pronounce the glory of God was going to be revealed to mankind. And it came not in a way that most men would think it. That's why he needed a forerunner to say, God was here. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. There's many people that would see that the kingdom of heaven, that today, you see things differently than they do. Your family, your friends, and those that are your neighbors, your co-workers, they see life as just life, but you see it through the eyes of Jesus. That forerunner that comes, the glory of God has touched your life. It's powerful. And it is, it's not just bread. It's a promise that says, by his stripes we're healed. It's a promise that says that love never dies. Love, come on, mom, say that with me. Love never dies. Love, love never dies. dies. This is a symbol that love has not died. It's a lie. Mm -hmm. You may have had family members that have passed on, but love doesn't die. Mm -hmm. It lives. Love lives because you live and you carry it on to another generation. It lives. It's resurrected every time that we again come back to this and it doesn't die. And this, his body was broken for you. It was busted for you. Bruised for you. And it says again that by that, you have stripes. By his stripes. Lord, today I just thank you for this symbol. Lord of mercy. That it was laid upon you the iniquity of Broken, he brought life and hope. Father, today we just humble ourselves under your mighty hand and recognize that sometimes the gifts that we receive, Lord, are freely given to us, but they were not cheap. Somebody else provided. Thank you for this gift of salvation. That, Lord, by your stripes, my heart was healed, my mind was restored. The joy of walking with you became that, Lord. The, your presence, Lord, to come into my life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Lord, I pray for that one that's been away from God. And they feel it today. They feel like they, they need to restore that place. Today we thank you that it's not complicated in humans. Lord, it is about faith and our trust in you. And today, Lord, we just say as we take this communion, it's a holy moment, a sacred opportunity to say, Lord, I'm with you. Lord, I'm not against you. Lord, I come and I humble myself and I ask you, Lord, once again to forgive me. There's times where I don't know that I don't know. And I, Father, thank you that you forgive me because I, I didn't know what I was doing. But today, Lord, I humbly come before you and I ask, Lord, for every sin that I've committed, both known and unknown, Lord, would be cleansed from my soul. That I would have an awareness that my eyes would be open, my ears attentive, Lord, to your correction so that, Father, I can make it that crooked place straight, that rough and smooth. Lord, if we confess our sins, you're faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank you for this promise. Today, Lord, I confess I need you, Jesus. And without you, I can do nothing. So today, Lord, I make this commitment as I partake of this bread and say I'm with you in the name of Jesus. Let's take the bread together. Lord, because it talks about the hope that's ahead. 
Lord, not the fear that's been behind, not the things that Lord went wrong, but today, Lord, he talks about better things. That Lord, mercy triumphs over judgment. That hope lives. Today, Father, I pray for whatever someone's going through in this room right now, or listening on Facebook today, Lord, I pray for the power that's in the name of Jesus. That hope lives, love lives, faith lives. Lord, I thank you that these three things remain after everything is said and done. What we have, Lord, believed, what we again dream, and Lord, see you call us forth in vision. And Lord, what again love requires. Lord, all of these things are found in this cup. Love required everything of you, Jesus, and you freely gave it. And Lord, today you say, freely. Lord, you, you've allowed us to freely receive it, not for money, Lord, not for a position. Not for, Lord, just information, but the revelation that Jesus is the Son of God. We thank you for this promise. Let's take a communion together. And let's stand together. We can't just go proclaim a blessing. And if you need prayer, we're going to open the altars here after this. We can say a prayer with you. But we need Elijah's. We need, the, Lord, the spirit of Elijah to come upon the people to have a voice. Oh, God, for voices. I thank you that you're raising up voices, Father, all over the place. Oh, God, I pray that, Lord, there will be more voices in our school, Lord, that will rise up and, Lord, say and proclaim that which is good, righteous, and holy. Lord, over our children, we pray a blessing today. God, that you will watch over them, that you will keep them. Lord God, that you will hold them in your own hands, Lord. And everyone that's a child, that Lord, we know, we speak a blessing, Father, that your hand will be powerfully upon them. That, Lord, again, in their schools, even a young child can have a voice. And, Lord, though they, the teachers may not like it and, and can put them, in, Lord, down, Father, I thank you that the resiliency of a voice of a child can be heard. And even that, Lord, is answered by your hand. And so, Father, we pray, Lord, for the blessing of God upon them. Today, Father, we thank you for being together. Lord, I thank you for the, the power of the voices in this room. Amplify kingdom purposes in this region. Lord, bless their voice. Lord, give them, Lord, the words to say. Your, your word says that you will give them words before kings. How much more, Lord, just in the simplicity of our neighbor co-worker, Lord, those in our family, oh God, we just pray blessings and help in the name of the Lord everywhere we go. Give us a voice, crying out, Lord, that this place and this region will become fertile ground for the kingdom, and Lord, we will see your hand move in ways that, Lord, only you can move. We pray this for your honor. We pray this for your glory. Lord, I pray that, Father, your glory will be revealed to each and every person in this Lord region. Lord, every man, every woman, every child, in every place, Lord, all over this region where they work, live, and, and Lord, learn and play. Lord, I pray, God, more of your spirit will come out upon this region than we've ever seen before. Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Greet somebody before you leave today. It's been great to be in the house of the Lord. If you need prayer, we'll be here. We'd love to pray for you.